boys and you know, why should we be worried? When you look here, you can see stunning figures really. Aviation is, is recognized as rep contributing 8% of the, uh, the global GDP, supporting something like 32 million jobs worldwide. Very, very important to the world economy. And at the same, on the converse side, it only contributes or accounts for something like 2% of the man-made CO2 emissions. So is that an issue? Well, the, the worry is that with the amount of growth we see, the 2% doubled rapidly becomes 4, of course. And there are some people around who suggest that 2% that of CO2 emitted by aircraft at high altitude represent a more impact than 2% of other wood at, at ground level. So this is a, as a major driver for us to, to ensure that as the, as the volume of the aircraft grow, as they're delivered, we actually find ways of, of offsetting that and, and reducing the amount of emissions. So that's our challenge today. Simple terms, putting the two things together, meeting the increasing demand for air transport whilst addressing the environmental concerns. Of course, Airbus has, sorry, Airbus has built itself on a, on a history of technology. Its driver for success since its incep inception has been built upon technology. Going right back to the, um, you know, the early days of the 300, the twin engine, twin aisle aircraft. Introduction of the two crew cockpit, the two cockpit, with the, with the side stick controller, and the, uh, the common, the um, cross qualification, common crew cockpit. CFRP and major components, the introduction there of the vertical fin at that stage back in the 1980s. On the A320, you know, second generation of digital auto flight systems and electronic uh, you know, uh, engine, engine control systems. 340, massive step forward, all new advanced technology wing and CFRP finding its way into other major components such as the pressure bulkhead. And then A380, Huge technology steps on a number of fronts, big, big increases in amount of carbon, probably in some of the most critical you know, structural components you can imagine, the, the centre box, the part that joins the two wings together and, onto the, and the two wings onto the fuselage, right at the heart of the aircraft structure. You know, many tonnes, very large, huge carbon structure, roughly seven metres by seven metres, just about fit on this stage, I think, and I could walk around inside it. So. Big steps, huge commitment to carbon fibre in that stage. And it didn't stop there, of course, many other items across the A380. So that aircraft, you know, a market-changing, world-changing aircraft built upon technology. What's that achieved? Well, as an example, the industry has really, over the past 40 years, managed to reduce the fuel burn by 70%. It's also reduced noise by the same sort of order, 70-75%, and nitrous oxides by, by uh, you know, similar amounts. Of course, the driver historically for fuel burn has been simply been economy. This is what the airlines are looking for, reducing fuel burn, reduces cost of operation. But actually, of course, it's also delivering environmental benefit, and it's perhaps fortunate for us that we uh, the two run hand in hand. But you can see. You know, we're now running on an aircraft that's 70% less CO2 emissions. And in fact, is now really competing, it is more fuel efficient on a, on a seat uh, mile or seat kilometer basis than the average family car. How's that come about? Well, it's a direct result of investment in research in, in aerodynamics, in, in structure, uh, lift right, right through, um, power plant, of course. Everything else has added, everything's added up to a, a more efficient aircraft. It's not just the, the elements of fuel burn and such like. The pictures here also demonstrate the reductions in, in soot and, and other things and smoke. You can see the aircraft, I think anybody who can remember airplanes flying 20, 30 years ago would remember the, uh, the trail out the back of them you know, on takeoff and elsewhere. Now I think we very rarely see that. But it doesn't stop with new types. We have a, a continued commitment to improving the existing aircraft. If we look on, on existing fleet today, 
we continue to test and challenge and, and look to improve the aircraft. Here you see a picture of 320 flight testing large winglets. Obviously the, the 320s had winglets on for many years. Whether the large winglets offer a step change, significant step change is something that's under study at the moment. On the system side, we've made a number of steps, enhancing the, the braking and steering control system, improving the cabin interconne interconnection and intercommunication systems, providing integrated standby communications, certifying the aircraft for narrow, i.e. 30 meter run runway ops, improving the lift of the aircraft and lift drag ratios of the aircraft, providing the airlines with steep approach capability, microwave landing systems, GPS landing systems, continuous upgrade and continuous improvement of an already excellent and highly competitive product. So, where are we going, what are we heading for? If we continue those, uh, those challenges, we've got to get ourselves down here much improved targets. The general trend was suggesting you know, we'd be at something like 3 litres per pack per 100 kilometres. A380 today is the first aircraft already to consume that. And you can see the mark there against where average cars are. Does that mean? Apologies if it is. The issue, of course, is to set the goals. The previous one showed you something in the way of goals. But in, in Europe, we've been signed up to a, a set of uh, 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 aviation system or aviation tra air transport system wide goals now for a number of years, what's called the Atari 2020 vision. In, in the late 1990s, a group of uh, personalities, senior people in, in aviation industry in Europe, got together and considered really what should the air transport system strive to achieve by 2020. There are a range of headings in there, um, safety, economics, quality and such like, but the biggest focus nowadays of those visionary targets has been focused on, on, on the emissions and they, they set the target of a step change or a, or a change between year 2000, aircraft delivered in the year 2000 and new types delivered after 2020 of a 50% reduction in CO2 emissions. They shared that out between the aircraft manufacturers, the engine manufacturers and the air transport management side. And today those are, huge, those are some of the main drivers for what we're doing in terms of new aircraft design and in terms of research. How do we get there? Well, that's about driving a methodology through the business. It's not just about technology, it's about a whole system. And Airbus is absolutely committed to that environmental approach. We were the first aircraft, large aircraft company to get certified to the international ISO 14000 environmental standard. And that's required to embed in the business environmental approaches throughout the whole process. It goes from the design and technology side, obviously using new technology into the aircraft design, designing aircraft with an environmental focus. It looks at the supply chain, working with the supply chain to draw technologies up through the supply chain, draw new design concepts through the supply chain, and to encourage the supply chain to have an environmental focus as well. Then into the manufacturing cycle, looking at the, the issues inside manufacturing in terms of uh, waste and emissions and, and power consumption and such like, and the most efficient ways of, of manufacturing the aircraft through to then to transporting the aircraft parts around. Obviously, anybody who knows anything about the Airbus business model will recognize the parts are made in various parts of Europe and we do spend time and money shipping those parts around. Is that environmentally unfriendly? Well, it has a downside, of course, but actually when you look at it, the efficiency of the game in the business of operating that way and the through life impact of it is almost negligible. Actually, the through life elements are driven so much by the efficiency of the product and, and the number of what happens in, in service that the small element in transport is, is lost. So it's aircraft operations we have to focus on, enabling the aircraft operations through design, the most efficient aircraft operations we can, working with the operators and everybody else to provide them the most, the most efficient aircraft.